Our stories are only meant to be stories for fun. After she asked for an open relationship before we got married, I ghosted her. Our past goes back to when we were kids, and I'm sorry this story is so long. Because our parents were friends for life, Jan and I had been friends since we were kids. Our relationship began when we were teenagers, even though we grew up together. We thought our families had better plans for us than we did. I had to move to a different place to get my master's degree, while Jan stayed in our hometown to get her nursing degree. We broke up after a year of being together long distance because we didn't want to let the stress of our relationship rule us. We both valued our friendship, but we were also seeing other people at the time. It was strange because we both knew deep down that we would get back together in the end. After I finished, I did my job in my field in the city where I got my master's degree. It took a long time for my move back to my hometown to happen, so when it did, I was thrilled. At this point, Jan was dating a nice guy for a long time, but I could tell he was a little wary of our friendship. Because I cared about their relationship, I stepped back. I still talk to Jan a few times a year, though. I'll call my boss and teacher Paul. He was a great person, and we became good friends. After showing me the rules, he came down from his office one day to talk. He said that there was a two-year job opening in a foreign city that would be posted soon. He then talked about the job. The pay wasn't very high, but it covered everything, like rent, hotels, and travel costs. I would basically be based in Tokyo, but I would have to go to other Asian places every once in a while for a few days. This chance made me think, and I talked about it with my parents and friends. Paul told me it would be hard, but it would also be a great chance to prove myself and move up in my work. So I thought, why not? There was a chance I could save most of my pay and learn useful skills. Paul offered to put in a good word for me with the bosses, telling me that he had done something similar before and it had helped his business a lot. So I made up my mind to do it. It was hard the first year to get used to the customs and ways of life in Japan and the other places I traveled for work. It was surprising how willing the women were to date guys from other countries. People everywhere I went seemed to be very interested in outsiders. There were some loose relationships between us, and I made it clear to all of them that I wasn't interested in marriage or anything long-term since I was only there for a short time. In the end, I decided to stay for two more years. Several times a year, Paul would come to visit either for vacation or to oversee some work. I'll admit that we had some fun in a few places, like Angela City in the Philippines and a few others. After my deal was over, I went back home and put a good down payment on a house outside of town. Hey, I needed some space after living in a place with 37 million people. After being away for a month, I went back home to see my parents and ran into Jen. Since she and the other guy broke up a year ago, we've been talking more seriously, even though we've always kept in touch. We eventually got back together romantically. As much as I wanted to be close, I didn't because I was really afraid of what would happen. Because I had been with a lot of different people while I was in Asia, I was trying to figure out what I wanted before things got serious with Jen. Jen knew I had been dating, but there were pictures of me with other women on social media from time to time. My mother even called me a ladies' man a few times in jest, which wasn't totally wrong. From here on out, things start to change. Jan and I finally slept together, and I think she was pretty shocked. She said I looked different from before, but she meant it in a good way, like I seemed more experienced. When she asked me some questions, I didn't tell her how many partners I'd had because the number was still pretty high, even when I split it by three. Without a question, though, I knew I could and would be true to her. Unfortunately, this night left a doubt in her mind that would later grow into a big problem. As usual, our families were thrilled that we were all together. Things were going well, so I asked her parents for permission to ask her to marry me. When she moved in, everything looked great. Something like Jan asking me if I was happy with her was a red flag for me. Let us now jump to December 2019. It was supposed to be June 2020, but we all know what happened in 2020, right? It was a wonderful Christmas. Then, right before the new year, we had our first big relationship problem. I was working on my computer while Jen and her cousin Tammy, who I've known since we were kids, were managing some wedding-related matters. Before we could talk, Jen asked Tammy to come in and sit down on the couch in the living room. I sat down at the table so we could talk. She first told me not to bother her because she wanted to talk about something. Then she brought up our disagreements in the bedroom and said she was afraid I might not be happy with her and might cheat on her. If I left, 
she didn't want our future or the lives of our children to be wrecked. I was afraid she was going to break up with me. It felt like a bad commercial with the famous line, but wait, there's more, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse. Jen shocked me when she asked me to start dating her. She thought it would give her more knowledge and make her feel better about herself. She told me not to worry because she had only ever loved me and nobody else. That's why none of her other relationships had ended in marriage. I concurred with her because I shared her thoughts. First, I thought she had to be kidding because this couldn't be real. It didn't feel real. Because it happened a year and a half ago, I'll try to remember the more important facts. Jen told us that she would never be with someone we knew or worked with and would only be with unknown people. It would only happen once with one person, and there would be no mental ties. I was shocked beyond words. When I realized she meant what she said, my heart raced and I didn't know what to say. In general, I'm not angry or violent, but I was yelling at this point. Tammy was close, and I started to understand why. Tammy said she was only there to support Jen, but I yelled that she was putting Jen up to this. Then Jen asked if I would like the same freedom with the same rules. I said no. I was really mad. I'm still angry when I think about this. I said I wasn't interested in one-night stands. I wanted to be with one person for a long time. When she asked who, I avoided looking at Tammy and told her I wanted to be with her. Tammy and Jen were both shocked by this. She got red in the face and felt awkward. Jen said right away no, saying that Tammy was family and someone we both knew, and that it wasn't okay for me to even bring it up. I felt like I had stepped into a completely strange world. This just appeared out of nowhere. We had a long fight, and I made it clear that our relationship would end if she did what I told her to do. It's not okay with me at all, and I love her. No, this is not something we can work through together. I got angry, threw down my pillow, and stormed off to the guest room. Some of what they were saying could be heard downstairs. It would have been funny if it hadn't gone on for an hour. I had trouble sleeping all night and was a mess at work the next day. Jen started working the night shift for two weeks that day, so at least we wouldn't be at home together during this time. Before talking about this again, we both needed some time to calm down. Every day, she brought me food and a note saying I love you. I sent her a lot of texts, but I didn't answer them all. I was working on my computer one Thursday night during her night shift when I saw that she had an email message. It was a reservation at a nice hotel near my job that I knew well from trips I've taken with co-workers. I believed she might want to say sorry and go on a night out with me. If she texted or called me the next morning to invite me, she only asked how my day was. Then she talked about how glad she was that her last night on the night shift was almost over. I was confused because I didn't understand how she had booked a hotel room for one more night. It was sick and stressful for me at work. I looked through profiles on dating sites, especially ones without pictures, in the hopes of finding someone. I looked for proof of wrongdoing but couldn't find any. Paul, a co-worker, saw that I was a mess and asked if I wanted to go get lunch. He always agreed with my relationship with Jen. He suggested we have lunch at a hotel restaurant after I told him what was going on. I turned them down right away because I didn't want to go there. Those details were unknown to him. Though I didn't want to, we went to lunch anyway, but I couldn't eat or drink. I couldn't keep working like this, Paul told me, and he offered to help me take as much time off as I needed, paid or unpaid. He heard me and knew I couldn't stay at home any longer. What I was hearing made me feel like it wasn't true. I ran home, threw as many things into my car as I could, and then I went back to work. Later, Paul suggested that we wait outside the hotel for her to check in. It made me feel more like Inspector Clouseau than like a private eye or investigator. While I really didn't want to, I needed answers. Setting up in the lounge bar, I began drinking a lot while still hoping this wasn't real. Paul hit me on the shoulder around 6.30 and there she was at the front desk, but she wasn't wearing her outfit. I was so angry that I wanted to scream, yell, cry, or something else. When she got off the lift, Paul and I walked to the front desk to wait for 10 minutes. When I asked the front desk to connect me to Jen's room, the phone rang. I yelled into the speaker as soon as she answered, and she sounded confused. If you did this, Jen, I told you that our relationship would end. I'm done, I told her. I hung up the phone and quickly left the hotel. In what direction should I go now? My phone started to blow up when I got back to Paul's place. The only person I called was my dad, 
and I told him what happened and why I had to leave town for a while in a PG-13 way. The issue wasn't up for debate, and I regret how I talked to my dear father. For two days, my phone wouldn't take a break. As many people as possible called me, but I didn't answer. It got confusing for me. How I felt can only be described as walking underwater. To protect myself, Paul told me about some money issues I should handle. That wasn't even on my mind. Mortgages, wedding costs, and car loans. We had two different bank accounts, one for the wedding and one for house costs. I honestly don't care. I told Jan in an email the next day that it would be our last word. I told her I was going to be out of town for a while, so the wedding and everything else were off. Back to my dad, I called him and had a long conversation with him. He felt terrible, but he knew I needed time and room. He told me he hoped things could still work out. I got on a plane and went to Bali 10 days later. I did not answer any of Jin's or anyone else's emails or texts. I didn't care if I was fired. If I weren't so drunk, I'd say I had a good time. The way things turned out made me angry, ashamed, and resentful. Regarding my leave, I kept in touch with Paul. After three weeks, he asked if I could go back to Tokyo to take care of some things. As we talked about the new global virus, I brought up the idea of going back to Canada because I had heard that there might be lockdowns there. My trip to Tokyo began on March 1st. It was nice to be back at work, even if it was only for a short time. Paul told me to go back to Canada when I told him about the planned lockdowns, but I insisted on staying until May, thinking it would only be 30 or 60 days. It took me a while to think about what to do next. Hurry up and wait 30 to 60 days. It took me another year to get vaccinated after I moved to Japan. But I didn't really want to go home at that point. I talked to my family and rented out my house, but I wouldn't give them any information about Jin. I found out that my dad had a heart attack on September 21st. He was doing okay, but he had to have a triple bypass surgery. This is a dangerous condition, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Simply put, I needed to see him. It was going to get messy when I got home, and I didn't want that to happen. Even though I was being selfish, I only wanted to see my folks and thank Paul for everything he had done for me. Despite not knowing how I would feel or what to expect, I knew I had to see her. I am sorry this message is so long. A lot was missing. Any suggestions, comments, or pieces of advice would be great. I'm leaving in 4 hours and will be back in 24 hours. Update 1, when I got off the plane, I went to see my dad. He looked good and was looking forward to his surgery. My mom is okay, but it's clear that she's hiding how worried she is. I was by his side for almost 24 hours. I think we talked about a lot of different things, but nothing too heavy so as not to stress him out. He knows I'm here for him, but I'm also using this trip to change things in my life, shut some doors, and open others. My friend and I have already had a few drinks together. We talked about my dad, work, and other things. He even asked me if I was in touch with Jan, and I said no. Afterwards, he told me that my boss, the old man, wants to see me. I suggested we wait, though, because of what was going on with my dad. But I want to avoid getting into too much trouble, so I agreed to meet with him. This month I have a list of things I need to do, so I might as well start checking them off. One of my goals is to meet Jin. It feels like a long time ago that I walked into the office for the first time. Many well-known faces were missing, and along with the normal suspects, there were a few new ones. As we went up to the old man's office, which I had never been to before, some people smiled and nodded at me. Upon entering, he motioned for us to sit down. The old man and I had never met before. He does sometimes show up on the floor, and when he does, people leave like the Red Sea. Here's what happened during our chat. Dear old man, good morning, guys. Everything that is said in this meeting is private, blah blah blah. I have to say that the old man had some good points when he went on a rant about duty and commitment. Later, he asked Paul why they should keep me on board. Also, Paul said that he does great work. He's saved accounts and made a lot of new ones, and we can't find anyone else willing to do the work for 20% less than what we pay him. WTF? After that, Paul and the old man laughed so hard they looked like they were in a scene from the movie Goodfellas. After wiping away a tear, the old man said that Paul was the best vice president he had ever had. I felt a little insulted, so I looked at the old man. He leaned in. 
An older man came up to me and told me that I was having trouble with my woman and offered to help. He gave the name of a guy as the source of this knowledge. I may not remember his exact words, but this is what they meant. The eyebrows that God gives a woman are plucked out and replaced by new ones. Although God gives her a face, she changes it. God gives her breasts, and she buys a water bra that pushes up. Even though God gives her a shape, she still doesn't like it, so she buys tight clothes to change it. For sure, God can't make her happy, so how can you? Sibling, don't go crazy. I have to say that kind of blew my mind. He saw Paul and looked at him. The old man told me that he trusted me to do the right thing and that his mother would kill him if he had to fire me. It hit me all at once. They knew each other. Now that Paul and I were outside, I turned to him. When I heard about the 20%, I asked if it was true. He told me not to worry by putting his arm around me. He looked out for me. I wanted to know if I was going to be fired or given some kind of punishment. Paul answered by calling me a dummy and telling me I was getting a raise. I feel his arm around me and he kisses me on the side of the head. I replied that I was annoyed that he could have told me ahead of time. Paul laughed and said this made the whole night funny. He called me kid and told me he missed me. He then suggested we get food. I made a comment about how early it was and asked who eats food at 8.30 in the morning. He said he does and told me I have a lot to learn about having fun in life. He also said it didn't surprise him because of what I've done in the past, bringing up the time I was drunk on sake and got into a fist fight with a monkey at the hot springs in Japan, where I got kicked in the behind. In the end, we had a great time. Our conversation centered on work and what was going to happen. When we talked about Yin, he told me I should meet her and make things right. He told me that we are both good people even though we did some stupid things. When I finally say goodbye to the past, I will be free to move on with my life without any feelings holding me back. He said that we could talk about my job future after that was taken care of. We can now cross that off the list. Luckily I still have a job. Dad looks great. It's still Jan's case, which has been on my mind the whole time. Before what was going to happen, I unblocked her on Facebook and looked through. I private messaged you and asked if we could have dinner soon. After saying hello to each other, we decided to meet for dinner in a few days. That's the next thing I have to say. After Jan got off work, we agreed to meet at a restaurant a few hours later. I was worried about two things before I started. I was going to stay angry and act in a certain way. If not, I would still love her, and I would act in a certain way. I hoped to find a good spot in the gray area in the middle. When she walked in the door, all of my plans immediately fell apart. She looked magnificent. There was a knot in my throat when she smiled and walked over. I wasn't this scared when we broke up together. A short, awkward hug followed, and I could smell my favorite perfume on her. Is she about to love bomb me or try to get me to feel bad? Does she have another boyfriend and is she here to show me what I missed? Not a single ring on her finger, not even the one I gave her. We first talked about my dad. She told me that she always checked on him while she was on duty and reassured me that the upcoming bypass surgeon was one of the best. Small talk came up, and we talked about how busy she was during the pandemic and what it was like for me to be locked up in Tokyo. It looked like I was going to cry. Beyond my outward appearance of calmness, I was actually breaking down inside. I thought this talk would help me deal with my feelings and finally move on. We went on and on about the main problem for way too long. At that moment, she looked at me and her face changed. I have a vague memory of the rest of the talk, but I will do my best to remember it. Jan admitted she was wrong and said she was sorry for making me feel bad. In order to test her truthfulness, I asked her if she was truly sorry for hurting me or just upset about getting caught. She said over and over again that she was sorry for the hurt it caused me and how it changed our lives and our future. I asked more questions to find out if her actions were caused by fear or a desire to punish me for the people I hung out with before we were dating. It was possible for both, she said. But she wanted to say that she had never loved another guy as much as she loved me before we got engaged. She later talked about her cheating ex-boyfriend Tim, who made her feel bad about how she felt about me. To be honest, I didn't feel bad that he cheated, I just said I didn't know. To keep her from finding out, I was going to sleep with someone else. I thought I could separate my feelings from it. The same way we handled everything else, we could handle it if she found out. After thinking about it, I said that she was wrong. I think it was the most painful thing I've ever been through. 
she didn't have to be perfect or have a lot of experience. For me, she had to be mine. Actually, Jin, none of them. That feeling I had with her was better than any of them. Now I'm beginning to wonder if it was a real feeling or if it was just because of our family's dream for us or the standards we set for ourselves. As the talk turned more intense, Jen excused herself to use the bathroom and calm down. The place we were in was about average size, with only a few tables taken. Some of you had suggested that Paul come with us to help, and he did so by carefully placing himself in the separate lounge area. I looked over to see if he was giving me a pep talk or a thumbs up. To my surprise, he was laughing and waving happily while having a lively conversation with two attractive women. Finally, he looked at me and gave me a curious hands up. I gave him a nod to let him know everything was fine. He smiled back, then gave me the middle finger in a cheeky way before going back to what he was doing. Really, this guy. When Jen came back, we picked up where we left off. She inquired if I had any questions for her that evening. I said it doesn't matter and can't be undone. Jen told me that nothing bad had happened to comfort me. Actually, she wasn't sure if she could have done it. Her freak-out response when I called the room scared her so badly that she ran down to the hallway, but I was already gone. It doesn't matter now, I said again. I'm not there to wallow in the past. We should keep our attention on going forward. I asked Jen to accept my apologies. Of course, I said, I can forgive her, and I also do. She's not a bad person, she just made some bad decisions that got us here. I agree that I should have been more open and understanding of her worries, but it's not all her fault. I felt a lot of different emotions during this talk, from love to anger to regret. There were times when I wanted to yell at her and times when I wanted to take her home and act like nothing had happened. In the weeks before this conversation, I watched YouTube videos on Reddit where guys were punishing themselves for cheating on their partners in much worse ways. I wasn't going to be that guy. I looked at her while thinking about what the old man had said about how people look, having their faces and nails painted, and wearing clothes that are too tight. Was it true that I knew her? If this is how she looked, was this how she felt? Was everyone thinking the same thing? Fortified, I asked, what now? Is there something coming up for us? She told me about a story from her childhood and asked me to remember when we were kids walking home from the park and a mean dog came up to us. She stepped in front of me out of the blue to protect me and save me. The owner called the dog back, but it ran away. We're talking about seconds, but that's pretty scary when you're nine. In response, I told her that I was still standing in front of her, loving her and keeping her safe from anything that might happen. While I was standing in front of her and giving her everything I had, she cut me with a knife, just like the frog did with the scorpion. The words I spoke to her hurt her deeply, and she bowed her head and shed a few tears. I wasn't finished yet, I had to say everything. I went on and told Jan I was sorry. She took the ring box out of the drawer and slid it toward me across the table. Due to my anger, I told them I did not want it. That made my heart race, so I asked her if she thought I wanted to sit there and watch her cry. If we had a baby by now, I would have liked to be at home playing with it. I didn't remember much of what was said after that because she started crying and covering her face with her hands. I had said some mean things before, but that one was the worst. I told them I was sorry and knew I had gone too far. I was angry, but this made me calm down. Things got calmer as we talked more. And after I let out my anger, we talked about life and the future in a more normal way. Making peace was out of the question. A long time passed between us before she got up to leave. I am going to leave it here and finish the rest tomorrow. I'm tired after these last few days. Okay, that was a fun tale. Let's go to a new awesome one now. Keep listening, and let's start. Story number two. I was cheated on after being with someone for four years. And here is the reason behind it. We've been together for more than four years. She's 24 and I'm 24. When we first met, she was still mentally and physically healing from being in a relationship that hurt her. I was there for her and helped her get better during that time, and we became very close. It was hard to imagine that she would cheat on me. When we were dating, we talked a lot about cheating, and we both really believed that it wasn't the answer to any problem. Instead, we believed in getting along with everyone. She had never shown any interest in other guys while we were together, so I had full faith in her. In the past year, though, she's become less close to me and started doing things I didn't know she was interested in, maybe even surprised herself. 
Mostly, she started going to bars with her best friend because she said she wanted to dance. I told her I wasn't interested in going to clubs and didn't want to go just to protect her. I first didn't think much of it because I thought she and her friend could handle any guys who were being nosy. After a few weeks, though, I saw that she had a message on her phone from someone named Chris, name changed to protect privacy. I thought the part where she said I think when she said his name was strange, so I asked her about it. She told him that an unknown guy had told her how good she looked and asked for her number, which she gave him because she was drunk at the time. Because of what happened, I became suspicious, which led to a fight. I thought, albeit stupidly, that she was only going to the clubs to have fun with her friend. As our fight got worse, she accused me of being too dominating and jealous. What I meant was that she might not be able to control herself when she's drunk, and I was afraid for her safety in places where guys could use her. We kind of made up after that fight, but there was still some anger between us. She started to say that I was critical every time she told me private things. At this point, I began to look at her texts in secret. Even though she kept talking to the guy from the club, it seemed mostly safe. He started a casual conversation every few weeks or so. Coming back to a few days ago, I hadn't checked her texts in a while. Since I kept putting time and effort into our friendship, I thought it was going in the right direction. Even though she said it was because of worry and tiredness from school and work, she still seemed a little distant. I thought she was telling the truth because I could relate to how stressed she was. But I guess everyone is different when it comes to stress. Yet, I couldn't resist checking her texts one night while she was sleeping to see what was going on. I found an old conversation with that Chris guy from the night before when I thought she had gone to bed early. She told him she was drunk when she sent him shots of herself at the club at 3 a.m. I was very angry, but I didn't talk to her right away. As I kept going through her texts, I came across another conversation with a guy whose name I couldn't remember. The way they talked seemed close, not too direct but also not completely innocent either. I thought about the start of their talk because of this. She gave this guy her number three months ago after they met on the street. After a few days, she told him out of the blue that they should not tell anyone about what they were doing in the bedroom. When that happened, I lost my cool. She was asleep when I woke her up and asked her to tell me if she had cheated on me. The answer she gave was a strong yes, of course. There was some silence, and then she asked for her phone. When I gave it to her, she stormed out of the room. Since then, she's told me what took place. That bad night, she and her friend got very drunk at her house. She was sad about our relationship because she thought she couldn't talk to me and that I didn't have enough time for her, even though I tried to spend time with her every chance I got. She took a walk by herself that night and texted the guy. She then went to his house, kissed him, hugged him, and fell asleep in his arms, or that's what she told me. She's now desperately trying to make things right with me again, telling me she loves me and promising it will never happen again. She is telling me that she is ready to go to therapy and work on fixing our relationship and making up for everything that has gone wrong. It's getting easier for me to believe her, but my heart is still broken. I'm not sure if I can stay in this relationship since she kept this from me while we were planning to live together, get married, and do other things in the future. How do I proceed? Should I not give her a second chance because of what she did? Should I let go of my pride and talk to her again? I'd like to thank you for all of your help and advice. I've decided to cut all ties with her because I don't want to live with her in fear and stress. I'm just hoping that things will get better over time.